everybody. Bless the name of the Lord. Can we just bless God in the place before we even go forward? Amen. Just begin to worship him. Amen. Somebody, if you can, just wave your hands and just magnify the Lord with us. Amen. Someone else, amen. Just lift up your voice and just say, Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory and all the praise. That's due to your holy name. Is there somebody that know God is an awesome God? Amen. How many know that he is a mighty good God? I said he is a mighty good God. Come on, somebody help me worship him for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We worship you, oh Jesus. We honor you, Lord God. You are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised. We bless your name, Lord. Your key turn that track up. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, breathe in. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living
everyone help me say that. Lord, I love you more than anything. One last time. Lord, I love you. Revelations chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we will go into our season of prayer. Amen. Revelations chapter 4, verse 1 says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it was of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and he that sat up was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which were the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like unto a lion, and the second beast like unto a calf. And the third beast had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts which had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And the rest, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sit upon the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell, fall down before him that sat upon the throne and worshiped him, that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise the name of the Lord. Just let's, let us just look to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before Your presence, O God. Father God, we come because, God, we know that You are the holy God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor this morning. God, we give you praise. Father, we lift up our voices this morning, oh God, in adoration and exaltation, oh God. We are declaring this morning, oh God, that you are truly the almighty God. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And Father, as we read, oh God, in your word this morning, God, that in your presence, God, there is worship. Father God, as we join with the elders this morning, oh God, and as we open our mouth in worship and in praise this morning, oh God. Father God, as we continue to lift you up and declare who you are in the atmosphere, mighty God. Father God, we go, we join with the elders, mighty God, and we declare that you are the almighty and holy God. Father, we ask you to receive our worship this morning, oh God. Everything that we are doing, God, every instrument that is being played this morning, God, Every voice that is being used, so oh low. God, to exalt your name, God. Every hand that is used, oh God, to clap. Every feet, God, that is used to dance, God. We ask you, God, to receive our worship today, God. We ask you, oh God, to just to call up high, call us up higher in our worship today, God. Father, as we come, we are coming, God, as vessels, oh God. Whoa. 
Gucci? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. Limiter, limit you are truly so the don't kill you, you, you are the alpha loud. and you are the like, omega. God, God we present this worship today. We present this ministry. We present all that we do, God. You said they that worship you must do it in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit of God, Yo, receive make the sure worship your main, from all of your people this morning. You, he, he's going to have you read God, that. We are asking you to receive our the worship main, this morning. Over there on the you left, to press that button this morning. Holy and make sure that volume is all the way up, too. Main above it. Oh, okay, Holy then, then that should be good. Somebody bless the Lord. That was awesome, isn't it? Hallelujah. Come on, bless God. We're going to worship the Lord with our opening hymn. It says, I will make the darkness light before us. What is wrong, we make it right before thee. All thy battles, I will fight for thee. In the high place, I'll bring down. God is fighting for you. Amen, somebody. Amen. Put your hands together and bless the Lord with us. Dark. 
Shout track. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at a handful of people and say things are getting better. Come on, look at a handful of people. Look around and say things next are getting next better. Tra- Once next the time, Lord just is on text them back. Be like, what track? Things are what? getting better. Praise God. Praise God. Someone just he literally just texted me. Yes, it's already done. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Three, three. Praise the name of the Lord. 
for a snap. Praise the name of the Lord. Give you greetings in no other name but our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Who makes all things possible. We thank the Lord for his blessings and guidance and keeping power. Amen. Just like the scripture says, hitherto have the Lord has kept us. Amen. And we are kept by his power divine. Oh, the old song says, now life is sweet and joy is complete. Because Why don't you put saved. the mic so if just in case you need to talk to us, you can today. talk. I'm here to let Jesus. the world know that I'm saved. Why are you playing? By the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh, not by man's doing, but by the blood of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Lord of Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we come into your presence. We're grateful for the songs of Zion. We thank you for the worship, for the praise, for the gathering of the people, even here in this Independence Day weekend. Oh, Lord, that we know that we are free and we are liber liberated just because of what you have done on the cross of Calvary. We are free from sin. Ah, oh, no longer bound. But we thank you, dear Lord, that we're free by your word. Whom the sun set free is truly free indeed. So this, Lord, that's why we meditate on your word day and night. Oh, that's why you will give us favor. You called us to prosper in due season. So dear Lord, we must not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Ah, oh, and dear Lord, our word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So dear Lord, as we hear the word, that we will meditate on it. We will realize that it came from heaven above. Lord, bless me indeed, your servant. In the name of Jesus, bless your hearers as well. We love you, we thank you, and we all say amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I greet you in no other name but our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And of course, to our First Lady of Mount Olive, put your hands together for her. We bless the Lord for her. In the name of Jesus, keep those hands going for all the ministers, all the evangelists, all the missionaries. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. We thank God for our worship team and musicians and workers in the back and workers all over the house, ushers and all the men and women, boys and girls, put those hands together for our, boy, for our Pastor Clint Brown and Lady Brown and every my Olivet all around the place. Here, here, near, far, everywhere. Amen. This is a, the Lord says, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell or the powers of hell shall not prevail. Amen. Amen. We're going up to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone that's watching, God bless you. Put your hands together for all those in the, amen, in their sanctuary at home and, or at work or while they're driving and they come to hear and experience a worship experience in the hands of the Lord. So I want to give you a wonderful word on this Independence Day, amen, weekend, amen, and how many of us feel free in Jesus? Hallelujah. Free in Jesus. So from a familiar scripture, the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Galatians, the fifth chapter. In the first verse, we read just that one verse. Galatians chapter 5 in verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. If you have found it, shout amen. When you can see it on the screen, shout amen. Hey, thank God for our technicians in Jesus name amen and Galatians chapter 5 in the first verse simply says stand fast is that right therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free not me but who us and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage oh hallelujah here end the reading of God's precious and holy word. May God bless it in Jesus' name. We want to use as a theme, let freedom ring. Hallelujah. Let it ring out. Amen. Proclaim it. Speak it out. Let freedom ring in Jesus' get, name. Get you a, may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Freedom. Hallelujah. Be ready. Independence Day, as we know, also called the 4th of July or July 4th. Anytime you hear July 4th, you know it's Independence Day. 
it was just a, uh, just what it was, two, two days ago where the youth, young people were asking, or the, well, they were asking what is the significance of the 4th of July or Independence Day. Many had their various reasons and so forth, but of course it became a national holiday, amen, in the United States, the annual celebration of independence. It commemorates the passage of the Declaration of Independence by the Congress, Continental Congress on July the 4th, 1776. All of those who's about to take the citizen exam, amen, that's give you that little free advice right there. You don't have to pay me, it's all right, amen. July 4th, 1776. Even all those who graduated from high school and elementary and so on should know this by heart. Independence Day is also celebrated on Monday of this year, tomorrow, July the 4th, in the United States. But we have those who declare and want independence as well. Amen. And not just for freedom from Great Britain, amen, but in social injustice and different things that has been going on in their life. And we have one who has I read like a wonderful social studies at least. Who ho- not read, but have given us a wonderful speech by the really name I of Reverend Dr. School, Dr. Martin Luther King, King Jr. Um, um, and his made his infamous and famous speech, I have a dream speech. How many of us have heard of that before? I have a dream regarding freedom, and he he was a reverend, and he was a pastor, so he was able to as well, amen, eloquently put the name of the Lord in there and include Christians and everyone alike. I would just uh, like to give you just a piece of it, of what he has said of I have a dream. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough place plain, and the crooked place will be made straight, and before the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope, this is the faith that I go back to the mount with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain the despair, a stone of hope, with this faith, we will be able to transform the genuine, discord, the genuine discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom forever, m- moving that we will be free one day, knowing that we'll be free one day. And I say to you today, my friend, let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the mighty uh, allegiance of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only there, let freedom ring from the stone mountains of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. The second day of July 17th. Okay. Let freedom ring. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are going to let freedom ring. Amen. And when this happens, we allow freedom to ring. We let it ring from every village and hamlet, from every state and every city. We'll be able to speed it up day when all God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, as he have closed, he said, we'll be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Did I give you the verse? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. And of course, in the United States here, we had voted in favor of independence from Great Britain on July the 2nd. But it did not actually happen or complete the process. Amen. They had to revise some things in the Declaration of Independence. Originally drafted by Thomas Jefferson in constellation with fellow committee members, John Adams, we have heard of, Benjamin Franklin, amen, Roger Sherman, and William Livingston. It was not until two days later that it was completed. In Congress, they went back and forth. They debated some things to revise the wording of the declaration to remove its vigorous denunciation of the slave trade. And slave, of course, we didn't see any victory or freedom until many years later. Finally, approving it two days later on July the 4th, a day earlier, John Adams wrote to his wife, Abigail. And what did he say to Abigail? The second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illumination from one end of this continent to the other, from this time forward, forevermore. Yes, and that's what he says, that it shall be celebrated with games and shows sports and illuminations and from one point of the country to the other. And the celebration was initially mo modeled on that of the king's birthday. It represented what they used to do for the king um, back in those days, which have been marked annually, but they were ring bells. They were set um, bonfires. They were have solemn processions walking back and forth up the street and many would give oratorial uh, proclamations as well. So in the early stages of the revolutionary movement, before the Revolutionary War in the colonies during the 1760s and early 70s, patriots would use such celebrations to proclaim their resistance to parliament uh, while applauding King George II as their real defender of the English liberties. However, the making, the marking of the first day of the independence during the summer of 1776 actually took the form of many towns of, their, of a mock funeral for the king. And when they mocked the funeral, it's his death symbolized the end of monarchy and tyranny and a rebirth of liberty. And that's why we celebrate that we have been liberated Amen, from the rule and the, and the certain paganism of uh, English or the Great Britain Empire. And that's why we now celebrate as a country, as a country. Families, we get together. We celebrate Independence Day by hosting and attending pic picnics and barbecues. Am I right, somebody? Anyone looking for a barbecue to go to this weekend? <laughs> Amen. Uh, many take advantage of the day off and some years a long weekend together with relatives and friends. They get decoration. They put up flags and streamers and balloons and even clothing. Uh, they color everything red, white, and blue. The colors of the American flag. They parade uh, are often held in the morning before family could get together while fireworks display occur in the evening time. After the dark, after dark, and all the parks have closed, uh, sporting events are going on, and fairgrounds and public shorelines, are, the beaches are full, and even the town square is happening. So the night before the 4th was once the focal point of celebration, marked by ruckus gathering often incorporated bonfires as their centerpiece. So Independence Day, I'm getting there, 
a little, little history or understanding what we're going to be talking about according to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. It tells us Independence Day fireworks were often accompanied by patriotic songs as well, such as the Star Spangled Banner, uh, the American National Anthem. Then they also had God Bless America, America the Beautiful, My Country Tis of Thee, oh, and This Land is Your Land, The Stars and Stripes Forever. Even Yankee Doodle <laughs> went to town. Uh-huh. And lift every voice and sing the Negro National Anthem. Many songs that would be sang, and everyone would know them. Even Patrick Henry, he was able to get up and say in March 23, no, the 33rd, I mean, sorry, the 23rd of March, 1775, prior to the signing Patrick Henry signaled the coming revolution when he spoke at a Virginia convention and implored, give me liberty or give me death. Well, likewise, born again believers. Can I start the preaching now before you think I'm running for office? <laughs> likewise, born again believers. Uh, Christians, other words, have a choice to make. Are we going to celebrate independence, such as our Christian liberty, which is a statement of proclamation or a question that we need to even ask ourselves? According to Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, oh, I'm sorry, verse 1 to 4, when I end reading, uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death or submerged into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. So Christian liberty is found in the Bible, uh, talking about different ways and concepts of what Christian liberty is. Liberty for Christians can mean or mean that they have been free from the penalty of sin. Um, by having faith in Jesus Christ, um, about what he has done for us on the cross of Calvary. Also, Christian liberty refers to being freed from the power of sin in one's life by daily faith in Jesus Christ. Constant communication with the Lord in prayer and reading the word of the Lord. And then our character, our conduct will have to change because now we are free from the old man and we have put on the new. The ultimate goal, can, can, wait, can I back up firstly? Amen. So when you're free from the old and have put on new, now you have changed. You are different. Just like when the United States wanted to be free uh, Great Britain had parliament. Am I right, somebody? Amen. But we decided we don't want parliament. We want total independence. So we made president, amen, and vice president and had Congress. And, and we didn't have to wear. And they started with the wearing of those wigs at the origin. And they got rid of that because of total independence. And likewise, when we are born again believers, we don't act or behave or our conduct and character, of course, uh, don't uh, uh, resemble of that of the world where we was bound to before. But of course, through the process of time and that regeneration that the Lord would do in us, we will have to drop off some things and we shall become new. When people see us and they uh, uh, observe who we are, they will realize that we are not the same. Hallelujah. 
And if you're still behaving the same way, if you're still acting the same way, if you're still doing the same thing, uh, oh, my dad and my mom used to tell us uh, that, well, you need another dip in the blood. <laughs> oh, amen. Because you have not been fully submerged, or other words, you have not surrendered your life unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So now the ultimate goal for the Christian should be to glorify God, um, edify fellow believers, and have a good reputation before unbelievers. So in other words, we shouldn't cause others to stumble. Um, there are certain things that the Bible don't specifically tell us about. Can I teach this real quick? Uh, amen. About what we wear, how we should put our hair, what we should put on our body and, uh, and makeup and, and also bling bling and or in other words, jewelry and, and certain uh, marking on the skin and all these other things. Uh, but of course, he tells us if it becomes a stumbling block to others, amen, we shall avoid them. And not only a stumbling block to others, but if it come, becomes a stumbling block to you, amen, you're still taking part of, like Daniel and all of them uh, didn't do, taking part in eating the king's meat. We got to separate ourselves. We got to become separated, saith the Lord. Ah, uh, and of course, doesn't matter what you wear, what you put on, uh, not specifically, uh, but however, we got to look like Christ in the spiritual. We got to act like Christ in the spiritual. And of course, that's where we get the understanding uh, that, well, well, the Lord knows your heart. Yes, he does. Amen. And he looks at the outer apparel. He looks at the inner appearance. Amen. While man looks at the outer appearance. But when the Lord takes hold of you, if any man be in Christ, you got to be inside of him. He become a new creature. The old things are passed away. Tell someone, I got a new me. <laughs> new, all things become new. Ah, oh, you got to be a change. Amen. Of course, sometimes when you get saved, uh, uh, some of the things you used to do, like your foul language is hard to control. Uh, but the Lord will uh, touch your mouth. Uh, you have to do like he did with Isaiah. Amen. Get some hot cold. Uh, amen. To shut your mouth. Uh, to, 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 to weld the lips together until your mouth have changed. Sometimes you got to do like Zechariah. Shut your mouth all together. Until your mind is changed, until your, uh, your soul is fixed. Uh, amen. Uh, don't give them the mic. Don't give them anything yet. They're still novice. They're still going through the purging. They're still going through the process. Uh, but when God get hold of you, uh, uh, there's got to be a change. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Saul, who became Paul, I feel like preaching already. Uh, uh, the Bible says that he had an old him. Uh, but when he got hold, when God got hold of him, uh, Ah, uh, he became new. Ah, uh, his eyesight will have to go. Amen. That you had to lean on somebody in order to get where he's going. And Ananias had to speak to him the things of the Lord, and he had to listen. The word of God went through his ears. Amen. And then when he was converted and when he was now changed, the Bible says that he preached the same one that he was denouncing Jesus and him crucified. Uh, so there's got to be a change in our life. Uh, and of course, the process of time, uh, the Lord would do it. And we will know when you have fully surrendered. We, the people of God, would know because by their fruits, we shall know them. So that's why the ultimate goal is to glorify God uh, and don't cause other people to stumble. Uh, so that's where Galatians 5 and 13 comes and it tells us, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use uh, not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, by serving one another. So the churches of Galatia, where we get the book of Galatians, was formed partly of converted Jews and partly of Gentiles 
who was converted from their pagan ways to Christianity. Uh, false teachers had come into the churches. These teachers promoted legalism and tried to require Christians to observe the Old Testament rules and Old Testament laws and their ceremonies, especially circumcision, in order to be saved. But Paul comes and he adamantly says, for freedom Christ has, not set, has set us free and that Christians should not be placed back under the law, yoke of bondage. The law proposed was to reveal our sin uh, and, and to bring us to Christ. But before Christ sacrificed, we live under the bondage to the law. We were burdened by demands that we could not keep. Christ's death and resurrection broke our bondage to the law. So Jesus' perfect life and holy sacrifice on the cross was the complete fulfillment of the law. Didn't Jesus said it best that I didn't come to abolish it? Amen. But I've come to fulfill it. And anyone who trusts in him for salvation was made right by God. Only Christians have true freedom from the law. Can I say that again? Only true Christians have freedom from the law. Amen. Not ritual rites. Amen. Not just coming to the house of God traditionally. Not putting on some nice clothing on a Sunday. Amen. Not doing certain things, do's and don'ts. But submitting yourself to the law of Christ. Amen. In other words, accepting what he has done on the cross of Calvary, saving you from your sin. Or in other words, if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. Someone shout, let freedom ring. Uh, so in this epistle, in this letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul draws his attention particularly directed to the point yes, that do. men are justified by faith without the works the of the law of Moses. The results of justification by grace through faith is spiritual freedom. And what is justification? It's the judicial act yeah, of God both. that declares us righteous. And we cannot be righteous unless we go through Jesus Christ. Amen. Law cannot save it showed our shortcoming. We can never get to that level where God want us to be. Uh, so the law was a measuring rod uh, to show that we can uh, not reach God's standard without some super element or supernatural element that he will have to send. And that supernatural element was Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh. So, uh, one of the main themes of the book of Galatians uh, is, uh, according to Gal uh, Galatians 3 and 11, uh, the just shall live by faith. Not only are we saved by faith, uh, but we, we got to continue to walk in faith. Uh, we got to live our life by faith. Uh, Jesus said we will, know, we will know them by their fruit which gives evidence of their faith that's within us. So all of us who know the Lord shall be diligent in striving to build upon the saving faith within us so that our lives will reflect Christ and others will see him in us and glorify our Father which is in heaven. This is why he tells us we must decrease as God increase in our lives. It's not I, but Christ, he says, the, who lives inside of me. Uh, can I pop that there real quick? Paul tells us it's no longer I that live, but it's all about Jesus, not I, but Christ. We can't do it on our own strength. We can't do it on our own power. Zechariah comes and he tells us not by might, and it's not by power, said the Lord. Amen. That's why we got to depend on Jesus. We got to depend on the Lord who makes a way 
out of no way. Uh, Paul knew that it wasn't on his own power. He should have been dead. But thanks be to God that gave him another chance. How many of us are so grateful that the Lord has liberated us? That we are free, giving us another chance, another opportunity. Uh, tell somebody it's not about us. <laughs> But it's about Jesus Christ. I dare you to say it again. It's not about us. But it's about the one who looks down and uh, uh, sits high and looks down. Amen. And interfere in the fears of men. It's not about us. But I thank God. It's all about Jesus. It don't matter if my name's in lights. It doesn't matter if my name's on the scroll. It doesn't matter if my name's on the billboard. But it's not about us. It's, but it's about Jesus Christ. Some people do what they do for the Lord, for public attention. Oh, they want to make their name as a public thing for themselves. Got their name ministry all around. Ah, oh, what the ministry can do for them. But I twist it and I turn it around. What can I do for the ministry? What can I do for the cause of Christ? What can I do for Jesus? Amen. Not I, but Christ who lives inside of me. What can I do for the Lord to expand his kingdom? What can I do to help somebody else? Can I say it again? It's not I, but Christ who lives inside of me. That's why I've got to tell the enemy who try to put thoughts in my mind that I can do it without the Lord. I got to give. I can speak. I can do whatever. I can sing. I can play. Amen. But I need Christ in my life. So that every time I open up my mouth, oh, the glory of God can be seen. I've got to do it so that every time you strum an instrument, that the glory of God can be heard. Someone can be saved. you got to do it so every time you open up your mouth to sing, amen, that glory of God will come down oh, and fill your soul. Oh, let God be true and the enemy a liar. Let God arise. Let God arise in your life. And he, Jesus said it best. If I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto me. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 19, Paul stated that in Christ he became dead to the law. Uh, Paul says that he became not sensitive to the law as a mean of justification because it lost its power over him and cease to influence him. Ah, Paul was able, was also dead to the world, to worldly desires, and the love of money, and to the pride of life, and to the dominion of evil, and hateful passions. Ah, it lost its power over him. And I'm here to tell you, when you get with Christ, who Christ says, all power is given unto me, he transferred that power over unto us. He said, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to be called the sons of God. And everyone that call upon his name, amen, the things of the world have no power over us. It can't make us sin. It can't make us backslide. I've got Jesus on my mind. I've got Jesus in my hand. I've got Jesus in my feet. In other words, I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. It has no power over me. I'm going in the name of the Lord. Satan, take your ugly hands off of me. Take your filthy hands off of me. I'm child of God. I'm God's elect. He got us in the palm of his hand. No sin. It lost its power over me. We was once influenced for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. It lost its power over our mortal body. We are living in heavenly places. I've got a home in the kingdom. Fare ye well. I've got a place beyond the skies. In that great getting up morning, I shall be able to meet him in the air. And then he be able to say, well done. Yeah. <laughs> 
You asked me the question. I feel it. I asked the question. So why you got to preach so hard? Why you got to sing so hard? Why you got to go all out for Jesus? Because he went all out for me. He went all the way to Calvary. He left his heavenly home. Became poor. So I can become rich. And I owe God. God sent forth a son, 
made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem us, uh, that we were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. We were a child, uh, we are a child of the new kingdom. We are a child of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, and the new king uh, uh, will give us liberation. Uh, uh, so that's why I be a servant of Jesus. Uh, that's why I proclaim it in the atmosphere. I'm going to let freedom ring. Uh, Galatians 3 and 27 uh, comes and says, For as many of you uh, have been baptized into Christ, uh, have put on Christ, uh, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond or free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And what is the promise of Abraham? Lord says to Abraham, I will be, I will bless you. I will make your name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I dare you to prophesy over your own life. Oh, tell the enemy, the Lord says he will bless me. Oh, he says he will make my name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You're not saying it. Proclaim it over your household. Proclaim it over your community. Proclaim it over yourself. I will, the Lord says, bless you. Tell somebody, I am blessed, Seth the Lord. He also said, I will make your name great. Ah, what else he said? And I shall be a blessing. I prophesy it over your life. I prophesy it over your household. I prophesy it over your spirit. He will make your name great. You shall be a blessing. You are blessed. Uh, it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you undertake. But you are blessed. I dare you to walk around real quick and tell every dark cloud, I am blessed. The Lord said, I am. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. I am blessed. Blessed are the more for the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. I am blessed. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be. I am blessed. Speak into your own life. The enemy have heard the blessing over your life. He beat into your future, and he's trying to destroy your life. Ah, while the Lord is blessing, the enemy is coming in to kill, steal, and to destroy. Rob you of your independence. Rob you of your liberty. Ah, trying to rob you of your inheritance. Ah, but I'm here to let every dark cloud every demon from uh, the pits, uh, every single one of them, uh, let them know, uh, uh, remind them what Christ has said uh, about you in the word. Uh, according to Galatians 5 and 1, uh, I stand fast, uh, therefore in the liberty uh, where Christ uh, has made us free uh, and be not entangled again uh, in the yoke of bondage. Uh, a shout in the air. I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. I'm not going back there. I am liberated. Not going back. I'm standing in liberty. I'm standing in freedom. I'm free. I'm liberated. I'm celebrating. This is my independence.
Pass them. Four shots. Five. Three. Five. Hold. Three, three, four. Four, 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 one. One. you be a servant of the Lord. Before we pray the prayer of faith and hallelujah, are you ready to, come out really to receive before. Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you ready? Ready. Are you ready, my sister? Are you ready, my sister? Hallelujah. Put those hands together. Come on, stand in reverence, in agreement, what the Lord is doing for these dear wonderful saints, those who those he is calling into his kingdom. He's going to call them friends. <laughs> ah, their ears and joint ears with him. He's going to have them covered under his blood and his protection. So, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, these are your children who the enemy have been trying to keep in bondage for such a long time. But we're grateful for this day. This is their Independence Day. They will remember this day etched in stone. Oh, in the name of Jesus, that on July the 3rd, 2022, they gave their life to the Lord. They resubmitted their life to the Lord. It's a time of liberation. No more tears of regret. No more time of sorrow. No more heartache and pain. But they are surrendering their life uh, unto you and your way of salvation. And Lord, you have made it straight. You have made it easy. Those who come to you, you will not cast them out. As they come freely. As they come without hesitation. Lord, we thank you for another chance. We thank you for this day of liberation. 
We thank you for their Independence Day. Ah, we thank you, Jesus. And they will proclaim and let freedom ring out in their lives. In the name of the Lord. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just loudly. Amen. And not being ashamed of the enemy. We want you to repeat this prayer after me. Amen. Is that all right? What's your name? Fiona. Is that what you were? Terrence and Melissa. Remember those names, Fiona, Terrence, and Melissa. Just say it loud after me. Amen. In a ways of confession to the Lord. Say, Lord, say it after me loud. Lord, Jesus, my Savior, I stand before you as a sinner that is saved by grace. I thank you for what you have done on the cross of Calvary. I thank you for dying for my sins. I thank you for raising up on the third day. And I thank you for coming into my heart. I receive you, Lord. I believe and I know I am redeemed by the blood, by the covering that you put on me. And in Jesus' name, I won't go back into sin, but I will go forward in you. And I thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name, I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. It's all right. Come on. Put those hands. They've been liberated. They're saved. Now life is sweet. Joy is come. Their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. They got a home in the kingdom. The angels are rejoicing. Oh. Hallelujah. It's etched in the book. And no one can blot it out. Stay with Jesus, my daughter. The Lord going to work out everything out for you. You keep coming. Bless you, my dear. Bless you, my son. It's gonna be all right. I did Fiona heard the youth outside last weekend. Am I right? And you came to church that Sunday. Youth convention, and she came back here again today. Something draw her here. That's why we say, the Lord said, if I be lifted up, then he will do the drawing. It's not I, but Christ. Bless you. Ha. That's why we got to lift him up for the whole world to see. Lift him up. Lift him up. Jesus have done on the cross. 
You're welcome, Sister Melissa, Sister Fiona, Brother Terrence. Yo. Turning these off in order to pain. And you told us to remember and do it on Got a daily basis. Nail all up in there. Y'all could you try know, to keep God, them on. They don't matter. Because I don't think it's bleeding like it used to. What's that next song? I am dying, O oh Lord.
received of the Lord, that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was portrayed, took bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took the bread to everyone that's holding your bread in your hand. And when he had given thanks, he break, break it and say, everyone, take this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Everyone, let's partake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember him on the cross. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And after that, the, the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. Do this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And let's drink. Hallelujah. We're drinking this blood. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood that washes us white as snow. Hallelujah. For as often as we eat and this bread and drink this cup, we do show up the Lord day until he come. God bless you all. And we always remember what he did on Calvary, what, how, what he brought for us. And today we are free. Hallelujah. Are we free on today? We are free. Praise the Lord. We are free. God bless you.
there's power in the word. And someone shout in the atmosphere, there's power in the blood. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to give unto the Lord. We want to bless the Lord in our giving. We are so grateful for the communion service, Lord's Supper. Amen. Identifying who we are with Christ. Amen. So at this time, we want to give unto the Lord. There's different ways and methods to give. Even those who are online who have not set up. Amen. Our recurring and consistent giving. Amen. You can do so either by going through our various ways of giving. Text to give uh, online I'm still stuck on, on our that. That was website, crazy. That was crazy. or even go to our cash app that was more crazy or by Zell. We want to bless the Lord in our giving. The Lord says He loves a cheerful giver. If you don't have a home church to pay your tithes to and to give your contributions to and your sacrifice to. Amen. We'll gladly help you to stay in agreement with the Lord and what he has said in his word. Amen. But it was the first fruit that you should give unto him. The first fruit means the gross. You start from the very beginning. You start to give the Lord from your beginning, from your start, from your origin. And then he will send the blessings. He will add to your life and you shall multiply. Multiplication will be your portion. No subtraction, no division, but you will multiply. I dare someone to shout in the atmosphere, we will multiply. Amen. Once we stay in agreement with God's holy and wonderful word in the name of Jesus. So hold those blessings in the air. Hold your phones in the air, your tablets, whatever you use. If you don't have any of those devices, amen, envelopes, whatever it is, or just raise that hand in the air. Even if you don't have anything to give at this time and your heart just desires to give, amen, it's okay. So, Lord, Heavenly Father, you see these hands, you see the devices, you see the offerings, you see the blessings, amen, which they're sacrificing and giving back to you. You see, bring all your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse that they be meeting, they be moving enough in here so that we can partake, that we will have enough and we can never beat your giving. So, Lord, multiply unto these children. Multiply unto your people. Multiply unto the ministry. Lord, that we be fruitful. Ah, oh, and then we will multiply. We shall gather. We shall, at the harvest time, have much more that we be able to even help our brothers out. So, Lord, we thank you. Even those that are without who are still searching for employment, searching for ways and means of bringing in substance. Lord, just remember, know at their heart, understand their ways, and in due season, they shall reap a harvest of blessing. So we receive it, we believe it, we love you, and we thank you. Let us all say amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord in your giving, in your offering, in your tithes. In Jesus' name, let's all stand in the presence of the Lord. Follow the directions of the ushers. Hallelujah.
shout, I am free. Hallelujah. Woo. Ha. Yes. Free. In Jesus' name, you be free. No more bondage.
27. Healthy and great. The enemy tried to destroy him and kill him even at a young age. Amen. Respiratory issues and problems. Amen. But been the back and forth. Ah, uh, he is still here. Amen. And shouting louder than before. Praising louder than before. Amen. Help me celebrate. I have reached my 50th year on earth. is saying. Amen. I like what is happening. Tell you, 50 is that new 30. In Jesus' name. You know, I've been told it's downhill from 30. I was like, it's uphill from here. <laughs> uphill. Higher heights. Deeper depth. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Let's send another announcement really quick. August the 6th, we have some flyers in the back. We have the Scan Van program, which will be in place. The Scan Van program, free screening, uh, mammograms, mobile mammograms, free screenings for eligible women. Amen. And we emphasize the word women. blood of Jesus and what he has done for us to liberate us from that type of bondage. So the key word is not eligible, it's women. So mammograms for eligible women, they'll be right in front of our church, 830 Utica Avenue, amen, Saturday, August the 6th. You have to register, am I right? It's important to register. Amen. So it's very important to register. So those who need to take and uh, have not other ways and means to get mammograms, here it is, free for you. Amen. And just register as well. Amen. All insurance plans, if you have any, are accepted. And all co-payments and deductible are waived. In other words, it's free. That's what some of my four favorite word letters put together. F-R-E-E. -E, free. Amen. You got to be 40 and older. For those 40 and older. In Jesus' name. Well, may God continue to bless you. Let us all stand in the presence of the Lord as we dismiss at this time. Some. Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, uh, our brother Kiron, his birthday was July the second. Put your hands together. Our birthday boy, play a little note for me. Let me hear it. Uh, uh, uh. All right. All right. Not the head a little bit. Go ahead. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Ah! <laughs> All right. Bless you. Bless you. All right. He's starting to shake a little bit. He's feeling it. In Jesus' name, Brother Marshall. Amen. Anthony Marshall, his birthday was yesterday as well. Am I right? Amen. God bless him. The husband of our dear. Amen. Missionary Marshall. Amen. I want to miss someone. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I believe that's all the 
announcements for now. We'll let it close it. Okay, Sister Sarah Esme, amen, her birthday was yesterday. All right, God bless her. Awesome. Amen. Amen. If she's watching, someone shout out onto the camera. Happy birthday, Sister Esme. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. All the best to you as well. Amen. We would have had a nice big cake for everybody. Amen. But weather didn't permit, but that's okay. Amen. Someone called me on the phone and said, well, your prayers were answered. It never rained over here. I'm like, well, where we live, it rained cats and dogs. <laughs> Amen. I was, at one time, it came down so hard, I was thinking, I was questioning, Lord, did you give me an assignment to build an ark? And I missed it. I mean, it was heavy, 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 heavy. Caused flooding and everything. Plain delays and all. Was a lot. Thank God for you. I, I, I said, next time that I pray a prayer like that, I got to pray in an area that I am going to be. I prayed it in Brooklyn and it, you know, it worked out over here. <laughs> we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. You may make God continue to bless you. I don't want to miss anyone. Is that it? Amen. Well, one more, one more, one more. We're grateful that my wife and I celebrated our 25th wonderful anniversary. Praise God. Come over here. My 25 year old. Come in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We're grateful. She went and got done up and everything for the 25th. We thank God. I thank God for her. Amen. May he strengthen us even for more. Amen. 25 times 25 times 25. Well, until the Lord's tarry. And then when we get to heaven, there'll be no more husband and wife. But So we got to make the best of it here. In Jesus' name. <laughs> May the Lord bless. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O Lord our strength and our redeemer may the God Lord watch between us while we're absent one from another and in Jesus name we love you and we thank you and we will let and continue to let freedom ring in Jesus name God bless you heaven smile upon you and give you peace amen the celebration. Amen. That date should be coming this week. We give you the date. Prayerfully that all of you can make it like how you have signed up before. All right. Amen. That new date of the celebration. 5025. We're celebrating the whole year. <laughs> the whole year is, yeah, that's right. Nobody had a 50th birthday before and nobody ever had a 25th anniversary before. We acted like that. <laughs> In Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you. Sister Sophia, welcome. Sister Melissa, welcome. Brother Terrence, welcome. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. 